When you're solving a linear inequality, you're going to solve it the exact same way you would as if this was an equal sign right here. All right. If this were an equal sign, what would you do first? Well, you'd get all of your x's on one side and all your constants on the other, right? So let's subtract 3x from both sides. So 5x minus 3x would give us 2x. And then let's add this 7 to the other side. So 9 plus 7 is 16. All right, now to get x by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we'll get x is greater than 8. There is only one thing that we have to do differently with an inequality than we do with an equality. And that is, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to reverse your inequality sign. So right here, we divided both sides by 2, but we did not divide by a negative, so we didn't have to reverse our inequality sign. Now, there are several different ways that we can write that solution. We can write x is greater than 8, but in advanced mathematics, we're going to use interval notation. Now, for interval notation, it looks a little bit like an ordered pair with your lowest value on the left and your highest value on the right. So for instance, we had x is greater than 8, so our lowest value is going to be 8. And then we're just going to keep going and going and going and going and going, getting greater than that. So the way we can express that is with infinity. Now, previously, you may have used an open dot when you had less than or greater than and a closed dot when you had less than, equal to, or greater than, equal to. In interval notation, for less than, greater than, we use a parenthesis instead of the open dot. And less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, we use a bracket instead of the closed dot. So you can kind of remember when you see this line right here that that reminds you of the line for equal to. So you'll notice over here we had x was greater than. So since it was greater than, then we would be using a parenthesis with the 8. It does not matter what this sign is right here. You will always use a parenthesis with infinity or negative infinity. And the reason for that is remember that bracket means equal to. Can you be equal to infinity? No, infinity is a symbol that represents the concept of something getting larger and larger without bound. So you can't equal that value, therefore you will always use a parenthesis with infinity or negative infinity. All right, so if we were going to graph this, Whereas before you might have put an open dot on the positive 8. Remember that open dot and parenthesis are the same in interval notation. So we're going to use a parenthesis there. And then we're going to shade the values going off to positive infinity. All right, look at another one of those. So again, remember when you're solving the linear inequality, you're going to treat it just as if it was an equality, just with one thing different. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to reverse your inequality sign. So to begin with for this one, remember that if you multiply by the least common denominator, you can clear out your fractions. So our least common denominator would be 2. That's our only denominator other than 1. So let's go through and let's multiply everything by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. 3 halves x times 2 is 3x x times 2 is 2x, and 4 times 2 is 8. All right, so let's get all of our x's on one side. I'm going to subtract the 2x over here, so that would be negative 5x. And then I'm going to subtract the 2 over here, so that would be negative 10. Now, to get x by itself, what do I do? I divide by a negative 5. And what do you do when you multiply or divide by a negative? You have to reverse your inequality sign. So we're going to say negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2, but we're going to change that greater than to a less than. Okay, so for our interval notation, 2 is going to be our highest value, so it'll go on the right. And then for our lowest value, if we're saying that x is going to be less than 2, we're just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller 
So the way we could represent that is with negative infinity. All right, so because we had equal to, then remember that when you have equal to, you use a bracket. So I'm going to use a bracket with the two. Am I going to use a bracket with negative infinity? No, because remember that we said you will always use a parenthesis for infinity or negative infinity. You can never equal those values, so you can't use a bracket. So notice it's perfectly fine to have a parenthesis with one value and a bracket with the other. And if we were going to graph that, we would have a bracket at 2, and then we would be shading off to negative infinity. All right, the next one they give us is called a double inequality. It's when you have two inequalities combined into one. You can work with it as it is, or you can break it into two separate pieces, whichever you like better. But if you break it apart into two separate pieces, just remember when you're finished that you need to put it back together again into one piece. So let's work with this right here. I'm going to add 1 to both sides to get all my constants on one side. And then I'm going to divide by 6. I don't have to reverse my inequality sign because I didn't multiply or divide by a negative. I divided by a positive 6. So negative 2 over 6 would be negative 1 third. All right, and then over here, same idea. We're going to add 1 to both sides. And then we're going to divide both sides by 6. And we would get 4 6 or 2 thirds. Okay, so remember, in the beginning, this was written as one piece. I broke it apart into the two separate pieces, so now I need to put it back together into one piece. So negative one-third is less than or equal to x, and x is less than two-thirds at the same time, so negative one-third is less than or equal to x, and x is less than two-thirds at the same time. All right, so for interval notation, our lowest value is going to be negative one-third. Our highest value is going to be two-thirds. Notice that we are equal to the negative one-third, so what are you going to put with that? A bracket. And then we are just less than, not equal to, the positive two-thirds, so we'll use a parenthesis with that. And so if we were to graph that, we would have a bracket at negative one-third, a parenthesis at positive two-thirds, and we would shade in between. And looking at this, we begin to understand why interval notation is preferred in advanced mathematics. Because you can see what you're looking at right here gives you a visual representation of what you would see on the number line.